Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to read the commentary on John 4 by F.B. Meyer. Our Lord had no wish to precipitate the conflict with the Pharisee party until he had finished his ministry to the people. He was the last and greatest of the prophets as well as the world's redeemer. He therefore withdrew from the metropolis. In John 4.4, 4, and he must needs go through Samaria, we find another must. There were three in the previous chapter, and there are two in this. It was not necessary for Jesus to go through Samaria, except for the purpose of mercy to one soul. Jacob's well was still visible at the entrance of the green valley up which Sychar lay. Thus, that is, as a tired man would sit, it was noon. The time when women usually drew water was in the evening, but there were special reasons why this woman came by herself. The love of God overleaps narrow restrictions of sex, nationality, and sect. Two conditions precede our reception of God's best gifts in John 4.10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. We must know, and we must ask. The living water is not a stagnant pond or well, but leaps up from a hidden spring. The woman keeps referring to the well, Jesus to the spring in the well. That alone can satisfy. Not the word, but the spirit in the word. Not the right, but the grace it symbolizes. John 4.13 might serve as the inscription on all places of worldly amusement. And it reads, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Ponder that word become in John 4.14, which reads, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall become in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You first drink of your own need, then you help to meet the needs of others. What a train of memories our Lord's words evoke. A spasm of remorse seized a woman as she remembered the grave within her heart where her first love lay buried, trampled down by the wild crew of later passion. But why awaken such memories? Why open the cupboard and bid the skeleton to step down? It could not be otherwise. Christ was there not to enter into an argument, but to awaken the dormant conscience and save. The woman evaded the sword thrust, but she realized that she was dealing with a master hand in the spiritual realm. Hence her question about worship. This led to one of the greatest sayings ever uttered on earth that God is spirit, that he is ever searching for true worshipers, and that he is indifferent to places and nationalities and methods, that we cannot worship until we live in the spirit realm and are willing to conform ourselves absolutely to truth. These thoughts have revolutionized the religious thinking of mankind. They have not yet fulfilled their mission but they bear witness to the unique supremacy of the Christ. As soon as Jesus opens the living spring within our hearts, we abandon our water pots. When we are saved, we must hasten with the tidings to those with whom we have sinned. First find Christ for yourself, then say, come and see. He who knows us with an unchallengeable knowledge cannot be other than the Christ. The disciples were naturally astonished when they came upon this interview. They might have asked the woman what she was seeking and the master why he was talking to her, but they were silent. The awe of God was upon them. Their natural care for their beloved leader led them to press on him the food that they had purchased. But they were destined to learn that the soul may be nourished in obeying the will of God. 
The whiteness of the harvest appeared in the crowds that were coming down the valley. But at harvest time we are sometimes apt to forget the sower who passed home without seeing the result of his labor. That is not the divine method. The sower is rewarded for his share as the reaper for his. They rejoice together. There are many ways of coming to know Christ. In some cases he comes to us as to the woman by the well and reveals himself in a direct and illuminating manner so that the soul can never afterward entertain a doubt as to its reality or its own experience. In other cases, the report of some associate or friend is the arresting and converting factor. Many Samaritans believe because of the word of the woman. There was a light in her eyes, a radiance in her face, a strength and dignity in her bearing that convinced them. There was yet another section of the Samaritans who watched and listened as Jesus tarried with them. They heard him for themselves and were convinced that he was indeed the Savior, not of the Jews only, but of the whole world. Our Lord could not remain among these interesting people for his mission was primarily to his own nation. He therefore proceeded on his way to Galilee, not to Nazareth, where he was so well known, but as appears in the following paragraph, to Cana of Galilee, where he was welcome because of the marked impression that he had already made in the metropolis. The particular interest of this beautiful incident is in John 4.50, which reads, Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. The father had such faith in our Lord's promise that he started off at once on his homeward journey, needing no further assurance that all was well. It would appear indeed that he went to some inn or caravanissary, on his way back, because there would have been ample time between the seventh hour, one o'clock in the day, and nightfall to get from Cana down to Capernaum. But why should he hasten? The boy was living, doing well. The master had said so. He was sure of it, and thanked God for it, and gladly took the opportunity of a quiet night's rest to sleep off the effects of long watching, intense anxiety, and the swift journey to Cana. When his servants met him with the news that the boy was healed, he inquired what hour the change had taken place, merely to corroborate his own conclusions. What a happy family that was! Why should we not have the same simple faith in the word of God's promise? I hope this commentary's helped you to come to know my father and his son, my king, my lord, Jesus, a little bit better. I just ask that our hearts could be opened, that our ears can hear the truth of our father, that our mouths can speak his glory and blessings to others and that we never fail to see the beauty and joy of his creation that's all around us just take time to enjoy the father and the son take time to enjoy his creation be thankful for everything you have Continue to pray for the children and for the less fortunate, for each other. And I hope you all have just a blessed day. And I thank you all so much for listening. See you next time.